he somehow got a script. I won't say it had anything to do with surreptitious methodology or anything. He got a script and he liked it. And then we talked to, we did the whole official thing. And then um, he, he brought it on the day, which is shocking, because I have two days with the guy. I've never met him, and I'm, I'm like the biggest, <laughs> I'm a horror nerd. So like, this is Jeffrey Combs. This is like, essentially God. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to talk to this guy. And not only that, he, I'm, a, I'm also a... <clears throat> I can tell you the carrying capacity of a Constitution class Starfleet vessel is 402, depending on the number of yeomans the captain wants. If he wants two yeomen, it's 403. I'm a Star Trek nerd, and I love Jeffrey Combs because he's in Star Trek too, right? So this guy is like, he's hitting all the notes, and he comes in, and I had this weird moment where I was like, oh fuck, Jeffrey Combs is here. <laughs> <laughs> I hired him. I paid him. I did all. He was supposed to be there. It was me and him. That was it. He walks in, and I'm like, "Oh my God, what am I supposed to do?" Jeffrey Combs just walked in. Um, but they, from the from the get go, he gave me a performance. He gave me a. a you saw. <laughs> he gave me a solid performance from day one. This guy's worked with Peter Jackson. He's worked with Stuart Stewart Gordon. I am nobody. I'm this little kid from Detroit. I'm so stunned. He just delivered. How professional is that? That's like ridiculous professional. He had, I got nobody. This could have been the worst movie ever. I don't know if he did it because he loved He told me he did it because he loved it. So I trust him. We've texted back him. That's the weirdest thing on earth. Get, like, oh, hold on. I'm talking. I'm in, a, in line for Froyo. Fucking Jeffrey Combs just, oh shit. And then you want to be like, hey, <laughs> look at that. But you don't, because, you know, that's a real dick move. <laughs> so, yeah, that's okay. Jeffrey Combs is amazing. He uh, obviously delivered. We did Combs things, like we made the mold kind of look like him. And at the very end, he has this big, I don't know if you guys stay till the end, but he has this thing where he's like, he's like, man's very first, very first final breath was his infection. Which is like super just Jeffrey. I, I, in Reanimator, there's a part where he goes, that's insignificant. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta put that in my movie. <laughs> so that's what we did. I keep doing this, like it's a burrito. I'm a programmer still, uh, just on the side, it's kind of a fun thing. I make games for Pixel Jam. Uh, we released uh, Retro Unicorn Attack and uh, a bunch of other cool games for Adult Swim and our own couple games. Uh, I know people in the industry, one of them is Alex Maurer, who is like a world-renowned chiptune artist. He's the first dude to ever release an entire album on an NES cart. It's awesome. He released two more and you can buy them for like four grand online. It's crazy. They're super collector's items. I have one. Um, I, I went to him. We've been, we've been buddies for a while. I went to him. I was like, would you like to do a feature? And he's like, what? Like a chiptune chip tune soundtrack to a feature? I'm like, yeah, but I want real hardware. I want an NES and I want a C64. I want the NES to cover the high range and all the melodies. And I want the C64 to give the big fucking booming like bass thing, you know? Uh, and he's like, sure, but, um, you know, that's not, we don't, that we, people don't do that. That's dumb. <laughs> I'm like, we're doing it. So, uh, the movie takes place in 1991. So there is context. I didn't just make that shit up. Like the movie takes place directly in 1991. I remembered what was my favorite song in 1991? Snake Man stage from Mega Man 3. That was my favorite song in 1991. I have my Nintendo DS right here. It has my Mega Man charm. I'm a giant Mega Man fan. So, um, that, that was, that's where that came from. Uh, I, I thought that it would, it would give you, it would, it, it, Toronto especially, considering the dream of the 90s is alive in Toronto. <laughs> it would give Toronto a really cool feeling, and the, the rest of the audience as well. I liked it for the nostalgia. I really wanted to say it's 1991 without saying 1991, so I told you that Gene Roddenberry just died, because he died in 1991. It was a very sad year for me, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, so that's that. Yeah, I, I've been told that, and I, you know, we'll pursue it if people want it. But I want, I'm a storyteller, man. I, I, I'm, movies are cool, but I'm not going to be like, well, this is inspired by a character. So, no, I want to, did you like, like, if you liked it, that's what I was trying to do. I wanted to make something fun. I'm more into like Robocop and fucking aliens and shit. Like, I, I'm not going to, like, composition is important if you're trying to get a point across to your audience, but it's not important if you're trying to show how awesome your dick is. So, I don't, I want you guys to enjoy a movie. So that's kind of what I did. Um, I would love that. If somebody wanted to take that and run with it on stage, hell yeah. And I also have like a million takes of Jeff Combs as the mold, and we did the mold live. It was like a theater performance. The guys actually, the, the puppeteers who did it, which was Tolan Effects, uh, for Steve Tolan from Pittsburgh, he built the thing and then he had a, a team of puppeteers and what they did was, it was really cool, I, I, I split up a bunch of different varying takes of the lines and we put a microphone, or I'm sorry, a speaker inside of the mold and he would talk live on stage to the actor. So it was a live deal anyway. He didn't know what was coming out. 
or when it was coming out. He didn't know which version of the line. So we got a real performance out of the dude. So you could definitely do that on stage. That'd be awesome. If you want to take it over and do it on stage, bro, I'll be behind you as long as I get, like, dollars. And somewhere, that Irish girl is just, there she is. You were going to you were gonna ask and you got afraid. You got scared. Is it because you hated it? Did you hate it? Okay, she was. She threatened to hate it. <laughs> so yeah, no, the inspiration I was was a bunch of depressing shit that happened in LA, and then uh, looking at that like 19 year old depressing shit as like a 30 year old, like going, oh, that's fucking fantasy. When you're 19, you don't know shit. <laughs> so it was me looking back at those like weird depressive moments and being like, that wasn't depressing. Ah. No, uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't really. What I did was I know what my friends and myself think are really fun movies. I wanted to make something, look for me, uh, film, filmmaking, storytelling in general is like, it, it's, it's, it's magic creation, it's, it's delight generation. That's the point. If you go to a movie and, like Traffic Man, I was sitting in traffic going, not, not the, not, uh, no, Crash, I think you Crash. Traffic was kinda cool. Trash, or Crash, <laughs> I call it Trash. Um, <laughs> But not David Cronenberg's crash, where they're like fucking at the car crashes. That was a cool movie. No, the one where like Sandra Bullock's kind of a racist and then she falls on the stairs and is no longer a racist. That one. I'm in that movie going, why? Like these people are, dep I know depressed people. I'm from Detroit. I know racist people. Why am I subjecting myself to the most depressing, crazy, but the acting was amazing. Yeah, but what did that do for you? Did, were you, were you, did you learn that there are racist people? <laughs> did you learn that sometimes people get depressed? No! Robocop, on the other hand. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I want to go see in a theater, right? We saw, check this out. We saw the battery last night. That's <laughs> right? That's primarily two dudes talking, but those two dudes are in an awesome situation that you couldn't have in real life. That's why it's awesome. You can just fucking, I'm kind of a racist dick bag. That's not a movie, man. Like, watching Ken, for Jennifer Connelly and her, and her unbelievably beautiful breasts doing heroin is not exciting to me. It's shot really well, but not super exciting. I want to see fucking the Nostromo jettisoning the, the, the escape pod. And, Mother, turn the cooling units off! Like, the, the, that's a movie to me. I, it's a moment where I'm sitting there wrapped, and then for the next like 20 days, I can't get this shit out of my head. And it's not because, wow, Sandra Bullock was a bitch that one time. Like, that's gravity, another Sandra Bullock vehicle. I'm thinking, I'm still thinking about how cool that looked to say nothing of the story. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I don't, was there a question that I, I did on that? <laughs> Sorry, guys.